It's about time. I'm a sometime teacher. We teachers teach for that glorious moment when the eyes light up and it's as if a light is turned on and the student sees. I'm up there pouring out my heart during my best to explain some complicated concept and the student says, oh, I see. No sweeter sound to a teacher's ears, or should I say, no sweeter sight than for a teacher to see that. From what I've observed, rarely does such vision, such enlightenment occur, <clears throat> in my experience, without some pain and discomfort. It's the discomfort of saying, is it this? No. Oh, is it that? No. Followed by the great exclamation that so warms a teacher's heart. Ah, yes, I see. For our eyes to be opened and for us to see usually requires some disruption. To see beyond something we've always thought requires that there be some dismantling of what we've always thought. Our eyes can't see everything in the world uh, at, at the same time, and, and so our eyes quite naturally filter out much that is set before them, so we can focus on a few certainties. Trouble is, focus upon those few certainties box out seeing counter-truth, exceptions to the rule, and prohibit another point of view. So effective teachers often uh, try to disrupt students' expectations, causing cognitive dissonance, raising questions in students' minds, and thereby giving students uh, the ability to see things differently, and therefore to have their eyes opened to new reality they had previously missed. These past months have been for many of us a time when it has been as if our world has stopped in its tracks. Our usual patterns of life have been disrupted. Isolation has severed many of our accustomed ways that we've related to one another. And in the process, sometimes our eyes were opened. We see things that we had failed to see. Oh, we long to get back to normal. We speculate on, when will all this be over? Or we say, I, I'd give anything to, to go back to my old daily routine. Perhaps it's only natural for us to look upon that time, uh, the, the time of COVID-19 and the time of racial injustice, reckoning, as maybe temporary setbacks in the course of things. Oh, the economy is in a sad state now, but oh, eventually things will open up, we'll get back to work, masks will come off, and we'll be back to normal. Lots of people all around the world are taking to the streets, protesting. Some places there are riots, destruction of property, vilification of law enforcement personnel, anger, calls for immediate reform, Oh, but given enough time, the public may tire of this disruption. Our attention will be drawn elsewhere and we can get back to normal. When a man like Donald Trump was elected president, many Americans saw this as an aberration of what we had been heretofore, that noble upward path of American democracy. Oh, oh sure, we've taken a wrong turn now, but it, it will last no longer than four years and we can all get back to normal. Others said, no, this presidency is not an aberration of the positive upward course of our country. It's a revelation of who we really are. It's, it's an exposure of those urges and feelings, those tendencies that we've usually repressed and suppressed. And now, in this presidency, they are unveiled for all to see. The word <clears throat> apocalypse comes from the Greek word meaning 
unveiling or revelation. It's the name for the last book of the New Testament, the Revelation. It, the proper name for the last book of the Bible from the Greek is the Apocalypse to John. That is the unveiling, the revelation to John. The curtain going up on the meaning of it all. That opening moment when all humanity sees God's intentions for the world fulfilled and everybody is able to say, oh, I see. An apocalyptic time is therefore not first of all when the world ends or when there are strange visions and climactic happenings, but rather apocalyptic time is when the veil is lifted, our eyes are opened, and we see. It uh, makes one ask, is our present situation with a double pandemic of COVID-19 on the one hand and white racial violence on the other, is the present time an aberration or is this an apocalypse? Will we look back upon this time as a momentary lapse, a temporary detour, or are we experiencing a momentous turn of history that will give us radically changed lives in the future? Is this a time, uh, is this time one of aberration from the accustomed course of things? Or is this an apocalyptic unveiling of truly new things? I'm a preacher. On a regular basis, I try to preach to people and uh, in my sermons, uh, one of my regular goals is to preach in such a way that people have their eyes opened. They see sacred realities which heretofore they had overlooked. And I use various arguments, illustrations, metaphors in my sermons. In fact, the word metaphor means literally to shed light on a subject. That's what I want to do. I want to shed some light on some sacred subject whereby people, by the end of my sermon, maybe they'll mutter, oh, I see. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. And yet it is a Christian belief that sometimes the most eye-opening experiences that we have come not as a result of the good exercise of our human capacities, our natural abilities, but rather they come as gifts of God. I preach, but ultimately, I know it's up to God to give revelation. Revelation, by its very nature, is seen in the Christian faith always as gift. Apocalypse, unveiling, revelation, gift of God. That means that if anybody says at the end of my sermon, oh, I see it. Well, it's an everyday experience of God's grace, gift. Will we look back on this time as a time when we had a slight diversion from humanity's constantly upward mobile path of eternal economic expansion and growth, of constantly growing human power and competency through science and technology? Or will we see this as a time when a virus reveal just how vulnerable, dependent, interconnected, and fragile humanity really is. What we see may be a matter of how much courage we have to see, truly to see ourselves and our age. It may also be a matter of how much God gives the capacity to see. To look upon the body bags in Manhattan or Mexico City or Moscow, that's an eye-opening experience. We who once were tempted to think of ourselves as in control, masters of our destiny, now feel small, vulnerable, out of control. I ask you, would there have been the international outcry at the murder of George Floyd by the Minneapolis police if his murder had not been filmed and then posted for millions to see. Many black lives have been taken in similar circumstances, and yet actually to see 
this horrible event, not to turn our eyes away, but to stare at the sheer inhumanity of this act, propelled millions into the streets demanding change. Will the Black Lives Matter movement accomplish a few things and then dissipate, to be remembered as a short time when racial tensions reached a boiling point and then were forgotten as we resumed our way? <laughs> Who knows? It's one thing to have your eyes open, to receive a vision. It's another thing to know what to do about it. It's one thing to see what needs to be done, quite another thing to actually do it. We shall see. It'll be sad, though, if having our eyes opened by truth we could not avoid. It'll be sad if we simply close our eyes and proceed right down the pathway before who was it that said, sometimes humanity learns from its mistakes, but most of the time we just pick ourselves up, brush ourselves off, and proceed right down the path on which we stumbled before. Sometimes, <clears throat> when you get a vision, when your eyes are open, you're paralyzed with fear over the prospect before you. There are other times when you can, for the first time, clearly see something wrong but you can't see beyond the wrong to what's right. There are other times when you see something, but what you see is so difficult to look at, but you close your eyes, you look away, or yearn for distraction. Perhaps that'll be the case for us in the present moment. It's too early to tell, and yet many of us have been given a vision, a sight, that we just can't get out of our brains. We've seen a man who was murdered, pleading, I can't breathe. We've seen with our own eyes politicians who tried to deflect, excuse, and downright lie about scientific, biological, human realities, excusing themselves for their own bungling of the pandemic response. Their chaotic incompetence response is seen alongside the untold human suffering produced thereby. And I don't, I hope, we don't get that sight out of our minds anytime soon. I didn't say that simply seeking the truth, having our eyes open to reality, the world as it is, changed anything. But I do believe it's a first step toward changing something. Some of us have had our eyes opened and enlightenment, seeing things as they really are, calling things by their proper names. And that's progress of a sort. Because, as the prophet says, where there is no vision, the people perish. At one of the huge Black Lives Matter demonstrations, after the murder of George Floyd. A reporter interviewed an older woman who looked to be about maybe my age. She pulled her protective mask down to speak with a reporter. Well, it's sort of surprising to see you out here with all these kids, the reporter said, clearly implying that this woman was maybe too old to be out here in the streets at night with the tear gas and the dangers and all the young people. Why surprising? The woman asked. I, I should have been out here 20 or 30 years ago, but I wasn't. I missed my chance. But I'm not going to miss this. Thank the Lord these young people are out here speaking up, speaking out. I just thank God that I live long enough to be able to seize this opportunity. Now is the time. <laughs> Thank God indeed. We've been living through apocalyptic, visionary, revealing times. We've had our eyes opened. Where shall we go from here? We'll see. <laughs>